Hey everyone, I'm Rob and welcome to the test drive. Today, I'm driving the 2019 Mercedes-Benz CLA 250 and today, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this car. Let's go. Before we get started, if you don't already know, I have a GoPro giveaway going on on my other channel called The Wander Affair. It's a channel that I have with my wife and I'm linking it above in the cards and below in the description. All you have to do is go to that channel, subscribe to that channel and go into the giveaway video and comment on it to be entered for the giveaway. We are giving that away as soon as that channel hits a thousand subscribers, which I think is going to be very, very soon. So the CLA is Mercedes' smallest sedan, and it's been in that sub C class space for the last few years. However, for 2019, Mercedes also launched for North America the A class. And it's an interesting situation now because the A class is built on the new Mercedes Benz architecture, the CLA is built on the old architecture but they're selling both of them in 2019. The CLA hasn't changed for 2019. It's the same CLA that's been out for years and the A-Class has been completely redesigned and now brought to the US. So if you're looking for a Mercedes in the mid to high 30s price range, you can get either the CLA or the A-Class and the A-Class is significantly newer. However, there are a lot of great things about the CLA that I really like. So like in every other review, we're gonna start with the outside of the car. Now, I have to say that, in my opinion at least, the A-Class is significantly better looking. I think it's just more modern uh, in terms of the front end and the rear and everything, but that doesn't mean that I don't like the way the CLA looks. This is a really attractive car and it does look really nice and modern and elegant. Now, the front end does look pretty good. I love the big Mercedes star in the middle. The headlights are not necessarily my favorite. They're just not the most aggressive looking, but they still look nice considering the overall shape of the car. This does have a nice side profile as well. You do have that low sloping roof line, which is one of the reasons that Mercedes calls this a coupe. And it's odd because when you look at Mercedes website, this is actually listed under coupes and not under sedans. But it's just one of those things like how BMW does the Grand Coupe, which is essentially the extended wheelbase four door variants of their coupes. Um, the CLA is kind of a similar thing, except definitely not in the US and I don't think in Europe either. Uh, I don't think there is a two door CLA anywhere, but I could be wrong. This CLA has the base wheel option, which are these 17 inch kind of like really thick spoke wheels. Uh, they're again, probably my least favorite option that you can get on the CLA. There are some very nice 18 inch rim options, but these don't look bad. Uh, you know, they still look like elegant, wheels that you would expect on a Mercedes. And then I think the rear of this car does look pretty good as well. I like the taillights. I like that you get dual exhaust standard. For I think only $300 or $350, you can actually get a rear deck lid spoiler. I definitely would get that on my CLA if I was to buy one. I think that just makes it look a little bit more sporty. Now, when you get to the interior of the CLA, this is one of the areas where I kind of have a gripe with this car, but at the same time, it's one of the areas that does make this car shine, in my opinion. I love the way that this interior looks. It looks very nice, very elegant, and I think it does look pretty modern. Now, if you look at the technology aspects of the interior, it is a little bit dated, especially when you compare it to the A-Class or to really all of the new Mercedes-Benz vehicles, and I'll get to that later in the video when I touch on the technology, but I have to say that the interior of this car does look really nice and it feels really nicely built, especially for this price range, you know, being in the mid $30,000 range, I think this is a really well built, nice car. The one that I'm driving has the MB Tex seats. So this is basically a leatherette, not real leather surface. And for $1,600, you can upgrade to real leather. And there are a couple different color options for that, but there are also a couple different color options for the MB Tex. And I have to say that these MB Tex seats do feel really Really nice. All of the surfaces in here for the most part are soft touch surfaces. You do have some hard plastic, but it is really nice looking and I would say higher grade hard plastic. I love the look of this steering wheel as well. It's very modern. It's pretty soft and I think it does look very aggressive as well.
well. One of my concerns before I got in this car, and it's just expected in this space, I mean, you're talking about a space where the cars are very small. This competes with the Audi A3, which is also a very small car. I was afraid that even for the driver and front passenger, there just wasn't gonna be enough space. And I have to say, I was wrong. Now, I'm six feet tall, and I do have a somewhat okay amount of headroom. I guess I could put the seat a little bit lower if I wanted, but the driver and front passenger do have plenty of room, and while there's not a ton of space in between the two seats, there's a decent amount of space. However, in the back seat is really where there's an issue in this car. Being six feet tall, I'm not that tall, but I can't really sit in the back seat. Now, I do have a decent amount of leg room sitting behind myself, but there just isn't any headroom. For me, I kind of have to turn my head a little bit uh, just to be able to sit back there. And obviously, if you're any taller than me, uh, you're gonna be pretty uncomfortable in the back seat of this car. But this isn't a car that's meant to haul a bunch of large adults around. I mean, this is a great car for somebody who has little kids and doesn't, you know, have adults in the back seat very often, or at least grown men or WNBA players, maybe. I like that you get a black headliner standard. I think that is so necessary in any luxury car. And for only somewhere around $1,500, I believe you can get the panorama roof. The car that I'm driving doesn't have that, but I would highly recommend that. I think especially in a car this size, it really just opens it up. And then you have a pretty decent sized trunk. I was honestly very surprised at the amount of trunk space in the CLA. Now the A-Class, from what I understand, has a slightly smaller trunk than the CLA, but a slightly larger back seat, and it does have more headroom because the roof line doesn't slope down the way that this one does. Another area where I was pleasantly surprised about the CLA 250 is in the performance. Now obviously, there is the AMG CLA 45, which is a much faster, I believe 375 horsepower version of this car. And from what I understand, I haven't driven it, but it is a lot of fun to drive. And my expectation with this car wasn't high. I knew that it had a somewhere around 200 horsepower turbocharged four cylinder, and I didn't expect it to feel quick at all. I actually thought it was gonna feel kind of slow. However, I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised. So, the two liter inline turbocharged four cylinder in this CLA 250 puts out 208 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. You can get it in either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. The one that I'm driving does have the all-wheel drive formatic system, which is a great system. And it's rated by Mercedes-Benz to go zero to 60 in 6.8 seconds, which doesn't sound very quick, but when you step on this thing, depending on the gear that you're in, you do have a lot of power. I mean, it feels significantly quicker, at least in my opinion, than 6.8 seconds. And it just doesn't feel slow at all. It's a really nice amount of power for such a small car. And this is also a really lightweight vehicle. So the power to weight ratio is significantly better than other cars with similar power. I'm also a big fan of the transmission in this car. This has the seven speed dual clutch transmission. And that is a really nice transmission. I love dual clutches. I love the way that they shift and how responsive they are with the paddles because you do have paddles in this car. And this is a great transmission. It's interesting to see so many manufacturers now moving away from dual clutch transmissions. If you look at a lot of the latest generation Mercedes and BMWs and other cars, you don't see quite as many dual clutch transmissions. But this one, in this CLA 250 is really nice. And this car also handles pretty well. You only have 225 millimeter tires, which isn't very wide, but at the same time, this is not a very big car and it's pretty low to the ground and it's small and it's sporty and it does handle well, especially for not being a performance sedan at all. Another very inexpensive feature, in my opinion, that you can get in this car is the adaptive suspension. I think that's awesome because you do have several different driving modes in in this car, you have comfort and sport and you have an individual setting as well and you have eco. And apart from the ability to adjust the steering and the engine throttle response and the transmission behavior with the different driving modes, when you get the adaptive suspension, you can also make the suspension harsher or softer depending on what you want and depending on how you intend on driving this car. So I really like that too. I think that's a must if you're gonna, especially if you're gonna order a CLA 250, but if I was looking to buy one, 
I would definitely want to find one that has the adaptive suspension. I also love the shape of the seats in this car. I think they look so futuristic and definitely something that's not expected in a car at this level. I just love the way that they look and they are very comfortable. Now getting to the technology in the 2019 Mercedes-Benz CLA 250, there are quite a lot of technology options that you can get in this car and of course, the one that I'm driving has none of them. All of the CLAs have this floating infotainment screen. It's not a touch screen, it's completely controlled with the scroll wheel, which I'm totally fine with by the way, but it is somewhat antiquated. This is the same system that Mercedes has been offering in vehicles for a very long time. You even have this really antiquated numeric keypad here and personally I like the way that that looks that doesn't really look outdated to me but just in general and especially when you look at some of the new Mercedes interiors uh, it, it is pretty outdated you do have a decent amount of functionality in this screen you have a very nice backup camera however navigation is not standard and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are also not standard now for only $350 you can get the smartphone integration package which does give you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that does solve the problem of not having navigation you can also get Garmin Map Pilot, which I believe is $625, and that's also a pretty inexpensive way to get navigation in your CLA. But then there is the multimedia package, I believe is what it's called, and it's about $22 or $2,300, and that gives you a bunch of features, which also includes the command navigation system. And a couple of the different technology packages give you Sirius satellite radio for whatever reason, the CLA doesn't come standard with satellite radio, it does come standard with HD FM radio, which is nice, but personally I'd rather have satellite radio standard and I think that in a Mercedes, it's a little bit odd, at least to me, to not have serious satellite radio standard, but all of the Jaguar and Land Rover vehicles that I've driven lately also don't have satellite radio standard. And I think it's one of those things where so many people are now streaming music uh, through their phones, through Bluetooth, that manufacturers aren't really seeing the need to include satellite radio standard like you had in a lot of other luxury vehicles in the past. It was like a thing with luxury vehicles in the past to have satellite radio standard, but I guess it's not really as sought after. People don't really care about it as much as they used to, and if they do, then obviously you can get that package in your car. There are also some safety technology packages that you can get in this car. They're all pretty inexpensive. Again, the one that I'm driving doesn't have any of them, but you can get blind spot monitoring. You can get some like driver assist and semi-autonomous driving features as well. But it's funny when you go online and configure this exact CLA that I'm driving, the only additional feature that it has are the heated front seats. Apart from the 4Matic system, that's just a, a model essentially. It's a CLA 250 4Matic versus the regular CLA 250, which is front wheel drive. I like that you do get push button start standard, although this doesn't have any keyless entry features, so you do actually have to unlock the car with the remote to get access to the vehicle. It also has the really old style key that Mercedes has been using forever, and I mean, even in AMGs from like 2017 and 2018, they also have this key, and only recently have I seen a key that doesn't look like the one for this car. I still think it's a nice key. It really pretty much sits in your pocket anyways, so honestly, it doesn't really matter what it looks like, at least to me. So I hope you enjoyed this review of the 2019 Mercedes-Benz CLA 250. Once again, I'm Rob. This is The Test Drive. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button so you support the channel and so you don't miss out on any awesome upcoming videos. I have so many more reviews planned, so many videos of my own vehicles, and especially now that we're getting into later spring in summer, the weather is starting to become really nice and I can make so many more videos. There's also more daylight. So this is a great season uh, for me to be able to produce a ton of content and there's so much more stuff coming very, very soon. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for taking this test drive with me and I'll talk to you soon.